comparing you and Joel, you know, do you see that being possible? I'm sure you see that being possible this year. Hell what yeah. will it take to make it happen? Was that a hell yeah? Hell yeah. Perfect. Perfect. What is going on, everybody? RB here. Welcome on into the show. Like always, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss any of this content. We're covering this team every day, and we just got to jump right into it. It was a very intriguing morning, afternoon, as uh, Harden sat down with the media for Philly Simmons with the Nets. Uh, before we jump right into that, I want to take a look at some wholesome content just to brighten up our day and get us in a good mood and get us amped and motivated. Looking forward to post All-Star break. So obviously we looked yesterday at all the footage from the first practice of Harden as a Sixer, but just a couple videos here that I think you will like. Um, earlier today, look at what's going on at Sixers practice. You got Embiid learning the Harden-esque step back. There's Sam Cassell instructing these guys. Look at this. Joel Embiid, I mean... He did this, what, a week or two ago? He did this, what, a week or two ago in a game, and I was just joking around. This was before the trade, and I had said, you know, um, Embiid trying to imitate his new teammate James Harden, and obviously it happened, and it was even funnier, but, you know, Embiid's so good, I wouldn't be surprised if he tries this in a game. He's such a talented big man, and, you know, he just keeps adding things to the arsenal. This is really cool to see them two working on it together. And then how about Joel Embiid? On his own. Look at that. Oh my gosh. He's actually perfecting it. If Embiid added that to his arsenal, if he added that to his game, like how do you stop that with all the other threats he poses on the floor and with James Harden on the floor next to him? It's going to be uh, absolutely insane, but I love it. Keep the content coming, man. All right, back to where we need to go. Obviously, a very interesting morning. We're going to start off with Simmons and the Nets. And honestly, I don't even want to talk about this, uh, but people uh, over there on Twitter keep asking me what I think and, and my takeaways and all. So we're just going to briefly go over this. Um, Simmons sat down with the Nets media. We'll run through some things he said. Um, his first and foremost statement was pretty much that he's happy and all this stuff uh, in his new you know situation. And he said that his decision to not play this year and to get away from Philly was not about the Sixers fans, the coaches, or any comments that were made. Um, I mean, okay, <laughs> I, I knew right off the rip. I mean, I didn't expect him to come out and say it was or anything like that, um, but I, I knew it was going to be one of those press conferences, you know, dancing around a lot of the questions, of course, but, you know, he's happy to be in his new situation. Um, there was a question regarding, you know, how it looks to the public perception in terms of Harden, um, and, that, and then Simmons, you know, uh, citing mental health and then going to another team and ending up playing right away. I mean, he's already ramping up. He said there wasn't a specific date, but he's getting ready to play. Um, and then in response to that question, he pretty much said, um, you know, you're lucky that you're seeing me smiling at all. I've had dark times over these last six months. Um, he was also asked about his free throw shooting. He said, no, stop working. Been in the gym, honestly. Talked about all the workouts he did. Um, this is fun, you know. Look, at the end of the day, I'm very, very happy that we got James Harden. I'm happy not to talk about it anymore. If he's happy in his new situation, good for him. Good luck, okay? But, you know, I, I thought the Nets media was actually doing a good job asking these questions. But the follow-up question to this, and I thought they were going to ask it, but they did not. It should have been, okay, fine. You say that you've been going through things the last six months. Well, why did it only get brought up? Right after you got fined for the first time, as soon as the fines started to accumulate, that's when it came up. Now, Simmons did mention that, you know, the organization knew about something earlier in the year. But all, all I'm saying is, why did it not come up in the public eye? Because if it did before, we would have supported you. And honestly, throughout the seven months, I constantly said on this channel, all I need is one press conference. Come out, tell us what you're feeling, how you're feeling and all that um, and it never happened until today. It was honestly, as much as I hate this guy, it, it was very weird seeing him in Brooklyn Nets uh, apparel and all that. But anyway, he also says that uh, upon being traded, he spoke with the Sixers owners, Doc Rivers, Elton Brand. He spoke with Tobias Harris, but he said, and he was asked after, did you speak with Joel Embiid? And he said no, which is just speaks to me everything I needed to hear. Essentially, he was probably frustrated that the Sixers 
Um, you know, have Joel Embiid, who's much better than he is, and we built around Joel Embiid. We actually built around him as well, but he's just up in his own head and doesn't realize that and never got better. And and the whole press conference, really, there was no accountability. He just said, you know, they're going to be scary, the Nets. And he was just kind of, like, talking about himself like a superstar, saying, like, oh, me, Kyrie, KD, like, our offense is going to be fast-flowing, we're going to be exciting. They're, they're just, again, he's the same guy, no accountability, really. Um, there was a, a little bit of it, but he just seems seems like the same dude. But he just stressed, you know, having a better mental situation, getting to a better spot for him mentally. Um, and that's pretty much what every question came down to. And <clears throat> he ended by saying that he hopes he uh, plays against us on March 10th. Who knows if he'll be ready? I don't care. I will be analyzing and watching him play, but I am very excited to be done talking about him. All right, out of there. Uh, James Harden, James Harden sat down and had his first press conference and it was incredible. I thought compared to Ben's press conference, I thought Harden spoke well, fluent. I thought there was no miscommunication and he just sat down and he was excited. He was amped and he really praised everybody else and and also took accountability, uh, himself. How about a group picture, right? This was after shot at the Paul Millsap as well, who was in, um, you know, the, the seats answering questions as well. Daryl Morey, Doc Rivers, Josh Harris. These guys look excited, man. I'm excited to get onto this new era of ball. Two quotes from James Harden that every Sixers fan should be happy about. Shout out to John Johnson. Quote, this is where I wanted to be. And quote, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Now, there's a bunch of things I'm not going to get to, but I, I really did enjoy listening to everything Harden said. I thought he handled himself well. I thought there were opportunities for him to put other people, you know, under the bus. And to be fair, Simmons did not do that either. Um, but but I thought, you know, Harden really took, you know, accountability. And, I, you know, there was one quote where they asked him about Doc Rivers. Um, and he pretty much just said, you know, Doc's a great coach. I'm excited to learn, and I need to keep learning. Even though I've done this for a while, I need to keep learning. I need to keep getting better. I want the coach to put me in better situations, and I'm ready. And and another quote that really stuck out to me was, you know, this team is already rolling. They're rolling the ball right now. I'm here to just help contribute, you know, not taking everything on his shoulders and being like, I'm that dude, you know, it's me and Joe Welsh. No, he didn't do that, and and I really did appreciate that uh, from James Harden. Another quote, they asked him about last year, a couple times actually, the the second time he kind of laughed it off, but the first time, They asked him about the trade deadline last year, and he said, originally when I was going through everything I was going through in Houston, Philly was my first choice. It just did not happen. Yeah, Um, so what we thought about Daryl Morey was confirmed. Daryl Morey tried to trade for Harden last year, and we wanted him, and James Harden wanted to be here, but like he said later on in the press conference, sometimes it just doesn't happen, and pretty much what did happen, as we now see, and it is now confirmed a year later, Houston didn't like Daryl Morey for leaving, and they weren't just going to ship them James Harden. Um, so we were right about that. And, you know, I mean, I got to commend Morey for trying, and he he stuck through the guns. He stuck through, and he finally got him, which is just an insane story. Um, but, yeah, Harden apparently wanted to be here all along. He thinks, like I said, it's the, the opportunity of a lifetime, and he gets to play with a player like Joel Embiid. As you can see, he called Embiid the best big man in the league um, and, and I thought it was great. He just kind of, you know, spoke to Embiid's greatness. Like we've been talking about here on this channel, Harden said Embiid, just having a guy like him who just demands so much on the floor. He's never had a player like that. Embiid, vice versa, has never had a player like Harden. Those two are going to mesh and fit. He, he did say we'll have an adjustment period like, you know, we've all thought, but it's going to work. It's going to work and it's going to take some time. But when it does, like, we have a player of that magnitude, and it's really exciting. Harden was also asked about the opt-in, where, you know, it was kind of up in the air the last couple of days. Apparently, he did not opt-in before getting traded, which was kind of puzzling and confusing and worrisome, but he cleared that up right away. He said, you know, I still have the chance to opt-in. I am going to opt-in next year. They just didn't get, you know, all of it finalized, which is very good and very comforting to hear Not another Jimmy Butler situation on our hands, right? Um, And Harden wants to be here. You know, I just looking at Daryl Morey this whole time and looking at Harden, they were so happy, right? We coined this the unfinished business era. I said that a couple days ago. You guys uh, said, you know, James Harden and Daryl Morey need to come together and they need to finish what they tried to do in Houston. And it's just, it's like, 
it's like a revival. You know what I mean? These guys back together. Now you add Joel Embiid in. Uh, Tyrese Maxey came up as a point of emphasis. Harden talked really good about his new teammate, Tyrese Maxey. That backcourt pretty much said, you know, that he's showing those leadership skills, those characteristics. He's been blown away. He's been really, really emphatic and excited about what he has seen from Maxey so far. I mean, he's praised him openly even when he was on the Nets. Um, and, and I thought that was great as well. He had a lot of praise for him. And how about, uh, you know, Tobias Harris, right? Right. What have we been saying all year long? Tobias, I call him the 20 point per game type of guy. Harden said the same exact thing. He said, Tobias is a guy that can get you 20 and, you know, he just has to help him get it out of Tobias and they're all going to mesh. Um, I liked how Harden spoke about everybody. Even when I asked him about his old teammates in Brooklyn, um, he was classy about it. it and also another funny moment. Uh, Paul Millsap, you know, he got a couple cool questions. Not a lot. Obviously, the Harden spotlight was on. But Millsap was pretty much, you know, just sitting up there. And then he's like, yeah, you know, it was kind of getting awkward just sitting here, not answering anything. But honestly, based off what Doc said, they said they're going to look in the buyout market. But Paul Millsap does seem to be on the way to get some runs. So hopefully he can help us out. Another great vet in the locker room. Um, and Harden said he feels good. He's ready to get back, ramped up in the action um, and he wishes he could play tomorrow, but after the All-Star break, it's going to get real. That's pretty much all we got. I thought Harden had, I thought he killed it for his first press conference. In Maury, we trust that guy got him. He got his guy. Everybody's happy. Joel, James, the rest of the guys meshing together. We got some great basketball coming to Philly. Those are my thoughts. Give me yours down below. Appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And like always, I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.